Well, to discuss the growing role of technology in children's lives, I'm joined now by the parenting expert Liz Fraser and also the psychotherapist Lucy Beresford. It's good to have you both on the programme tonight, ladies. And Lucy, are you surprised with what we found? Not at all. I mean, I think we know that children do get very stressed and they get very agitated when they can't necessarily understand how the world works. They want to have playtime, they want to have it explained to them. So to some extent, if you could go and play with your children outside, this would give them a great learning opportunity. Uh, but once a week, I mean, a third of children we spoke to only go outside once a week. I mean, how has it changed so dramatically since you and I were young? Because it's a very different lifestyle, isn't it? I think a lot of it is uh, increasing amounts of working hours of parents. Uh, I, I speak as a working parent myself, probably part time. But when so I get a working home, and mom, you're not there in the afternoon. Yeah, you, you're not there. You get home. It's dark, and it's it's. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's raining a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Though that's no excuse. I, I think it's partly that, and and it's also partly temptation and just the ease of it. I mean, what parent watching now doesn't know that it's much much easier to to say yes, of course you can play on your computer or your iPad than to do something involved yeah. and take them out. And also, by the way, I think there's a big difference between preschoolers and those who were at school. So we didn't, that wasn't broken down here. We, there's a big difference But at the there. same time, it doesn't really matter how old your child is. Children still want to have good quality interaction time with their parents. So if they're very little, it's about playing actual games with them. Mm. But if they're teenagers, it's about possibly just going for a walk outside talking, with them. Talking, talking not, but on the them, issue yeah. of being outdoors, we have some great messages from our viewers. Um, Mitchell Hodsell via Facebook said, there are too many child snatchers around these days and technology's taken over. My 11-year-old wants to hang out on the Xbox, take away the technology, and you'll see a difference. Uh, Deborah Gregory on Facebook says, streets aren't safe because there's more traffic, very few places to go and play, uh, and very little to do when they're out there. And Lynn McDonald, or McDowell, excuse me, says there's not nothing for them to do apart from hanging around the street corners. Then we all complain when they do. No wonder they prefer to stay inside. And, so, and that's true. There, there these are, are the challenges, parks. perhaps. There are fewer places for many people to go. Lots of people now but live is it in a urban fear? environments. But do, do parents know. these days think, I can't let my children outside to play because it's not safe, whereas a generation ago, that wouldn't have been a problem? It could definitely be a factor, but it might not necessarily be the reality. And it's certainly also something that Liz was talking about in terms of how much easier it is to just say to your child, go to your room, play you on your computer. Like that, Liz? I mean, would you let your kids play outside? You know, unsupervised. Oh yes, and and I do. Um, but of course, it depends where you live uh, mm. enormously. And and in fact, uh, you know, this I've had a lot of communication this evening as well with, with with viewers saying, you know, people. And it's not as much as easy to say in the city you can't play outside, and in the countryside you can, because actually the countryside is changing enormously as well, and people mm. zooming it. And you could be too hour. remote, and a lot of parents worry about their children being too yes. remote. But we case. must be careful about reality and perception, really, because the whole child snatcher thing and, and danger. You know, we've got to be very careful about what's a real risk and a real danger mm. and what is perceived and what danger is which doesn't exist. So, so, yeah, so, so what we're doing instead is letting children play on screens and whatnot. So, so as a, a psychotherapist, Lucy, how, how dangerous is that for a developing child's mind to spend between three and six hours a night looking at TV screens? Well, the worry is that they're not able to interact necessarily with real people, and you do have to practice that skill. We're not born knowing how to interact. So if your constant companion is really only a screen and they don't um, have to share things with you, you don't have to learn how to share, you don't have to learn how to develop your time in, with other people, so you miss out on that learning development. But, but maybe beneficial? Maybe there is a creativity with it too? I mean, children can connect with each other like we never could. Unbelievably so. There's mm -hmm. an Enormous advantage to it, and and I think I think schools have a huge role to play here to, to teach children about this. And in fact, my eldest came to me recently and said, "Mum, I'm concerned about the amount of time I spend online because I love doing it. Can you take it away from me mm. so that I don't have it?" And we mustn't forget that they are outside at school quite a lot, so it, it, it's not quite as terrifying as it might sound. But it's also in about being a good role model. If the child sees you on your computer oh, all yes. the time, <clears> you've <throat> got your laptop at the cook kitchen as you're stirring the soup, yeah. then it's very hard to turn around and say, "But you're not." allowed to do okay. it. So you have to be a good role model. Lucy, Liz, thank you very much for your thoughts this evening. And you might think that pop rules the music.